have today. You know, we fear a nuclear war. <laughs> Uh, the confrontation between the West and the bad Russians, you know. So uh, there's idolatry. You see, my country, right or wrong, my country first, you know, my country first, you know. Nationalism, you know. I'm sick of those people, you know. We forget that we're one human family. One man came to Jesus and said, who's my neighbour? Now he's a crafty man. He was a religious leader. He was like a, a professor from a university today. So he's trying to kind of trick Jesus. He said, what's the most important commandment, you see? Knowing that there were 600 Jewish laws plus the 10 commandments. And Jesus says, well, what do you say? You see, very clever answer. Jesus was not silly. He summed them up. He said, well, love God and your neighbour. Now, that's known as a Christian law, isn't it? Love God and your neighbour. Um, but he summed up the Jewish law. Now, th so they're all Jews who they paint as some vengeful, vicious God. Well, Jesus said, I'm coming again. And what did he say he was going to do when he comes again? He says, I'm going to ride on a white horse. I'm going to have a sword coming out of my mouth. I'm going to have armies behind me. And I'm going to bring the day of judgment. It's called Armageddon, not the end of the world, obviously, but it's the end of human ruled world under the influence of Satan. So that sounds pretty bad, this war. So that doesn't paint Jesus as all loving and wonderful and always forgiving. He's not going to be always forgiving. Do you remember he walked past a tree? He walked past a tree and it wasn't producing olives and he cursed the tree and it withered up in front of the disciples' eyes. That's uh, quite amazing. And there was another occasion he got very angry. Can you remember? A couple of times he went into the great big marketplace that they'd created in the courtyards of the temple. The temple was meant to be a holy place. You know, people accused Jehovah's Witnesses and say, why don't you go in your jeans? Why don't you have a T-shirt and jeans on and your sneakers and go to the Kingdom Hall and worship? Yeah, because he loves us. Why has he shown an interest in the human race? You see... Jesus said, look at the sparrows. Oh, God doesn't look after me. Jesus said, look at the sparrows. Does he, d does he not look after them? He says, he knows the number of hairs on your head. He loves us to bits. And he wants us to come into a relationship with him. But we can't do it without help. We could get help from those in our religion, our church, if they've got faith. Yes, we can get help from fellow believers. That's why... Fellow believers meet together. That's why they met in the temple of uh, uh, the same as the Jews when they came out of the Red Sea, along with their vast mixed company of people who joined the Jews. They thought we're sick of the way the the Pharisee, the, 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 the Pharaohs behaved. We're going to join the Jews. They went along, uh, but they while they waited for Moses to get the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, they'd lost their visible representation, and this is where idolatry comes in. Uh, so they said, well. He's gone. Is he coming back? He's been away for a month. Haven't heard a whisper about him. We need something to worship. They took their problem to Aaron, his Moses' older brother, who has been a loyal Jew for a much longer period than Moses. Moses, in fact, had fled, married some non, non Jewish, non Israelite person. So he was not really very good. Okay, been useful. He's taken through the Red Sea, but he a bit questionable. So anyway, Moses disappeared anyway. So Aaron, in his great wisdom, decides to, oh, well, I could make you make you one of them nice bulls that they used to have in uh, Egypt. You know, we could have a sacred cow, and we could, oh, we could adorn it with lovely gold. You give up your, give up all your jewels if you want to. We'll melt them down and make ourselves a beautiful idol. That's oh, we've got something now we can use as an image. Now we're still worshiping Jehovah. Uh, but we've lost Moses at the moment, and if he doesn't come back, well, we can worship Jehovah, Yahweh, through this lovely idol. There. Always we want to worship God in, that's convenient to us. We always want it on our terms. Jesus said, no. There's the problem. And then there's always those people, isn't there? So, well, these are my friends and these are my religious, this is my religious community. So they're much, you know, they're closer to God. So, so they're going to get saved. But the, those people over there, look at them. And maybe Christians who've left, you know, look at them. They should know better. 
and, and, and they haven't repented. <laughs> so we're judging, sitting at putting ourselves in the seat of judgment, and we're saying, mm, Amen. Well, Jesus said, What did he say? The man said, Who's my neighbor? Jesus said, Well, if, uh, your neighbor is the person who doesn't walk past someone in trouble on the other side of the road. The, it's the person who helps the stranger. This person was called the Good Samaritan. Now, imagine the worst person in the world you would never, ever want to help. I don't know, immigrants from down the road. I don't know who it is. You're in-laws, you know. Jesus said, help them. Look after them. Look after the people that you dislike the most. That is loving your neighbour. Because he said, who's my neighbour? Well, Jesus said, well... <laughs> Every single person on this planet is your neighbour. We are one family because we've come from one gene pool. The Bible calls it red man. Man made of red clay and woman. Biologists all agree. We come from a common pair. A common ancestor. That's why you can, if, if, you, if you live in America, you can... Meet someone in Japan, get married and have children. Or you can, if you're in Germany, you could meet someone in France and have children. We're one family. How does God feel about our behaviour? He's saddened, but he's patient. People say, oh, why has we had to wait so long? It's not fair. Hang on a minute. Almighty God has been waiting to sort things out for thousands of years. He even watched his son die because he wants to bring us back to him. But you see, if you've got anyone who you're estranged with, they may have the ump with you. They, I'm not speaking to them again. Well, this relationship that we have lost with our heavenly Parent needs to be restored. Hiccups on the way. Fortunately, Jesus said, pray to me. Pray to the Father, my Father, in my name. And I will apply my, the, my blood, will apply, and you will have a clean slate. So you may have a whole list of what you could call yourself sins. A lot of people, when they're slimming, they're on calories, aren't they? Calories are like sins, you know. I've, oh, I've had a thousand calories extra today. Well, you can be the same with sins. You, have, you know, I've overdone it. But Jesus just said, wipe the slate clean. Pray. Wipe the slate clean. Forget it. Don't dwell on it. It's in the past. Forget it. Mighty God forgives us. He says, OK, that's fine gone it's not in his mind it doesn't go i'm going to save that information for the day of judgment the day of judgment is an active thing where people get saved or not it's not some kind of court where you go there when you died you go up to the court and the court goes you did this wrong and you did that wrong that's a worldly court that's the way humans behave you know they hold things they hold information they remember they get resentment you did this and you did that wrong. When Almighty God forgives us and his son, it's over their shoulder. It's forgotten. They don't bury the problem and mark the spot and go back and dig it up. Oh, I hold resentment again then. But these are all things we have to work on. And it's going to take us, according to Jesus, a thousand years because he needs to rule us for a thousand years for us to slowly get better. This is the problem with this belief of a heavenly bliss, you know. You've had your jihad, you've done a car bombing or something as a Muslim, you've had your jihad and you end up in heaven with your vestal virgins, you know. Heavenly bliss, you know. Heaven is not um, a gardening programme where everything's wonderful and you've got classical music playing. That's not heaven and hell isn't a place where they're burning because you're bad you need to this is what people have imagined this is what people they would like to believe not not true 
The creator is too kind and loving for that. And he showed his patients, he loves us very much, but there has to be a time when he acts. And it's because we're reaching what is called the critical point where the human race has gone too far. There's too much danger to the planet. Everything could be lost unless action takes place. And that's called a great tribulation. And this great tribulation or great persecution will end only by Jesus rescuing the human race. And he cannot save everybody because people won't change their behaviour. So ask yourself, am I willing to change my behaviour? Am I going to try and not idolise myself on what I think is most important? And I'm going to try and love my neighbour, everybody, like Jesus did. We can only try. I'll fail every minute of the day, practically. So just that's humility. You just, just go, well, I've done it. I'm sorry. And try to do it better next time. We've got a fantastic future to live through, although times are going to get really hard. I just want to say thank you for listening and I'll see you again.